Hi there. Today we're going to be discussing a do-it-yourself project that I can take no credit for whatsoever. Um, but the idea is so wonderful and so simple and yet so ingenious that I felt like I just had to, to pass this along and share this information. For those of you who work with depth field adapters, you know that they can be kind of a blessing and a curse. Um, a blessing in the fact that you're able to achieve a very shallow depth of field using a 35 millimeter lens, um, which is one of the key ingredients to achieving that film look that we all want. But that same shallow depth of field can also be a curse because if you are trying to do handheld shots or if your subject is in motion, you're constantly having to adjust your focus. And, you know, every time you do that, you're running the risk of bumping into your lens and you know, ruining the shot. They've actually developed uh, a mechanism that addresses this problem called the follow focus. And a follow focus consists of some gears, one that goes around your lens, one that connects to a, a, lens, a, a, connects to a gear, connects to another gear that's usually connected to a knob. And um, this allows you to uh, have a very, very smooth focusing um, and that can be measured. Uh, they usually have a, a white marking disc that, that uh, you can use a little grease pencil on that when, once you achieve a, a focus, you'll mark it. And then if you want to rack to another object, that, another subject that's in, in that same frame and focus on it, you can mark that. And so you can rack between the two um, subjects without having to, to do any guesswork because it's already measured there for you. And uh, so I thought, you know, I've been using a depth of field adapter for over a year now. And that's been one of my biggest pet peeves is the fact that, you know, on my handheld shots, I basically ruined them because I had to keep on adjusting the focus. So I thought, I'd like to get a follow focus. Trouble is, they're really expensive. And, uh, you know, they some of them, have, at least the starter ones, have come down in price to about 150 bucks. But um, they usually range anywhere between 250 to 700 bucks. But I thought, surely the do-it-yourself community has, has, a, has, a, has a solution for me that I can do. Um, without having to spend all that kind of money. So I started looking on YouTube and Vimeo, and I found a lot of Do Yourself projects that consisted of basically people taking and tearing apart a uh, radio controlled car's transmission and getting the gears out of that, and then then uh, you know putting those together and combining them to make uh, uh, their follow focuses. The trouble with that is that, you know, I'm a musician, and I'm not that mechanically inclined. Um, I like to tinker, you know, if there's, a, if there's a problem, I like to try coming up with a solution. But it has to be something that I can kind of grasp my mind around, and I'm just not really great with a lot of, you know, mathematical things. So I thought, well, I'm really not going to be able to do that. Um, so I was a little disheartened until I came across the title of one um, video on Vimeo uh, that said, The One Dollar Do-It-Yourself Follow Focus. That got my attention. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really like whatever I can do for the, che the cheapest amount. So, I, I, I watched the video and the simplicity just completely amazed me, and the fact that it actually achieves a very, very good result. Does it look professional? Not really. But does does it achieve professional looking results? Yes, it does. The really neat thing about this do-it-yourself project is that it uses components that can be found in any hardware store in any part of the world. The first, the first component, and there's only four components that make up this, this do-it-yourself project, this follow focus, um, and they all can be truly purchased for under a dollar. The first component is a um, hose clamp. And hose clamps, uh, I think I got this one for like, I think 50 cents maybe. Um, you need to get one that can fit around your 35 millimeter lens. The second component is a very long but thin bolt that you'll, what you'll do is you'll basically screw or you'll drill a hole through your your hose clamp and bolt on that bolt like that. The second uh, component, or the third component, I'm sorry, is a rubber band, a wide rubber band. Now, um, this is 
the, this is the equivalent of the marking disc that I talked about earlier. Um, you know, this, this has to be big enough to wrap around your 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 35 millimeter lens, and you, these are really cheap. You can get, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think I even had to buy this. I already had it um, in a big bag. And the last component is some kind of a clip, or, or I'm using a paper clip here, and I'll show you show you what. But this is going to be the little pointer that you use as your your point. Um, you'll see what I mean about that a little bit later. But anyway, so I'm going to show you how how to put these onto your camera, and we'll get started. Okay, the first thing you're going to need to do is take your rubber band and put it somewhere. Um, Either, you know, somewhere that, that's going to be um, not moving. So, like this right here would be probably a decent place. Maybe right here on there. That happens to be on my aperture <laughs> um, thing. But, so, anyway, there's, there's that. Okay, so what we're going to do is you find the, the focal points that you have um, and you, you, you look at the, the one that's the closest and then you look at the one that's the, the farthest away and that's the one you're going to set, kind of set it up to because you're going to want the handle to be um, easy to, you don't want it to run into it like say uh, your your rail system or anything like that. And in this particular case you want to take the the paper clip and put it underneath the lens there. And then you want to tighten it down. Okay, so now you have this thing that, that is like this, and um, okay, so um, right now I've already marked on the the rubber band where the farthest focus is, which is going to be that 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 kind of duck that's in that 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 rain suit, and then what you do is you just move it till I want to make Curious George there uh, to be in focus, and I'll mark that. Then I'll come over here to the guitar and when that's completely in focus I'll mark that. So now I've got all three marked and I can go back and forth to each of them. And this is a very smooth rack focus. Here's the ducky there's George. There's a the guitar. Ducky. George. Ducky. Guitar. Ducky. George. Ducky. George. Guitar. George. Guitar. George. So, anyway, that's how you do that.